and Jesus, because Jesus came down as a man, God in the flesh, at the same time, the son of God, and he started speaking. Okay, so before you get a little confused, if you're new, if you're a brand new Christian, you might still be like, what in the world? Welcome back. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We're in week two of our study of the book of John. So welcome back and welcome to week two. Today, we will be focusing on John chapter one, verse one to 13. Now, why do I start with reading chapters one, verse one through five? Simple. In the beginning was the word. Did you make the connection? Let me explain. In the beginning, sounds like Genesis 1, because that's how Genesis 1 started. In the beginning, God. Right? In the beginning was the word. Now, we know that in Genesis 1, God spoke. He spoke creation into existence. He spoke was the word. But then it says, the word was with God and the word was God. He, in verse two, was with God in the beginning. Who is he? Simple. Jesus. If you've ever heard of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know that they are all one. Now, as a new Christian, I was a little bit confused about that whole idea of the Trinity. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Holy Spirit is God. Jesus is Holy Spirit. How is it that there are three in one? How does that work? Well, over time and over study, I finally, it finally dawned on me, right? All in one. So first of all, as a human being, I'm just me, right? But as a Christian, I have the Holy Spirit living in me. And so right there, I have God living in me now. And so when I applied it to me, I was like, oh my gosh, so this is me, Rosie, right? And I have the Spirit now of God living in me. So that's God's Spirit. But guess what? When I speak the Word of God, which is in the Bible, I am speaking the word literally of God through the Holy Spirit and Jesus, because Jesus came down as a man, God in the flesh, at the same time, the son of God, and he started speaking. Okay, so before you get a little confused, if you're new, if you're a brand new Christian, you might still be like, what in the world? So I don't have enough time to explain the entire Trinity, however, this is where I encourage you to do a deeper dive into the Trinity yourself. This is just a synopsis because we have so much to cover and I'm super, super, super excited. So here we go. We're going to continue. Okay. So through him, all things were made right in verse three through Jesus, all things were made and nothing was made that has been made right? In him, in Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. We're going to get to that. The light shines in the darkness. Light. Oh my gosh. One of my favorite all-time words now. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So think about it, right? Light. Look how powerful light is. Like 
this is my my husband and our our office basically this is really more like my husband's office i borrow it <laughs> as you can see sometimes i come here to you and i record from here this is my husband's office this is why you have a whole mess of library books books in the back it's like a library of all his books anyway so <laughs> so i'm here and i am in this office and why do i mention it because the office right now i'm facing a window so if you see that sometimes when i make these videos i have natural light coming in now this is powerful because this room in, in and of itself is a dark room but when i have the window facing my facing me it's like amazing how much light just comes to my face and it just overcomes the darkness okay so i think everybody can agree on that right light is more powerful than darkness but to think and to know that jesus is the light and darkness will not overcome jesus and what's darkness well if jesus is the light then darkness is quite the opposite right it is the evil that exists it is you can many people call him satan so the evil so jesus overcomes the evil and i want to encourage you with that because take a moment to really think about that these verses were one, verses one through five when i was first restored as a christian when my spirit was restored when i came back into the light like i was living in darkness for years if you have seen my restoration story or heard my restoration story you'll know some of the things that i went through and some of the bad decisions that i made but when i came back i started really being more intentional about my bible study and john is one of the first books i started reading intentionally and when i read verses one through five literally like tears started falling from my eyes like it just was like like mind-blowing to me because when i read the part that really impacted me the most was that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it and i want to tell you something whenever you feel like you're in the dark just know that jesus overcomes it he overcomes anything that you're going through, whether it's a battle of your mind, emotions that are hard to, hard to overcome, whether it's real life situations where you're actually feeling in the dark, you're grieving over someone, someone is sick and, and they're suffering, um, someone you love is going through something very difficult, you yourself are going through something very difficult, you feel alone, you know, let's talk about being alone, when you're alone, you feel like you're in the dark no one sees you think about what that means being alone you feel like no one sees you so what does that mean when no one sees you it feels like you're in the dark but in reality you're never ever ever alone ever so i'm going to continue reading in verse 9 the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world he jesus and he was in the world and and though the world was made through Jesus, the world did not recognize Jesus. Jesus came to that which was his own, but, he, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. You have been given the privilege and the honor of being called a child of God. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just amazing? And that was through Jesus. When he came to the world, the world didn't recognize him. If you read through the Gospels, you'll see that many, many people did not understand that that was Jesus. Like a lot of people thought, this is a great prophet. Now, a few knew that he was the son of God. A few believed like his apostles, his disciples that followed him and some of the others, but most people didn't realize that he was actually the son of God. So many people did not even, uh, didn't, they didn't even recognize who he was. Uh, and they were just, they were excited to get cured. They were excited to, to, to hear these amazing words that were like new and refreshing and but they didn't recognize him. And so uh, we're going to continue in verse 14. It says, the word became flesh, Jesus, and Jesus made his dwelling among us. And I want to talk about that dwelling in a second. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. 
And I'm going to finish off. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who himself, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. And this, I'm reading from the NIV version, if you're wondering which version I'm reading from. NIV is actually my, my top, my favorite one. So here we are, right? John testified. So the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, right? And John, who was his cousin, who came, who was the prophet called by God to be a prophet, to actually announce the coming of Jesus, he testified. John was getting people ready. This is a lot of what in the beginning of, of John, John the Baptist, we're talking about John the Baptist, not the John who wrote the book, but John the Baptist. So John being one of his disciples, and then John the Baptist being um, Jesus' cousin, and the one who would announce Jesus coming. So he said he was speaking about him. He was telling people about him. He was baptizing people with water, even though later on, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit, right? So it says, no one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God. So if no one had ever seen God, only Jesus, but Jesus is himself God, right? Because three in one, a Trinity, then that means that when Jesus came down to earth, everyone who saw Jesus was seeing God. Let me tell you how important that is. Perhaps um, right now, there's a, it's hard to appreciate that when you don't know a little bit of history about the fact that for years and for centuries, people couldn't see God. There was no way you could see God. Like, if you saw God, it was like it, you would have died, okay? You could not see the glory of God. So the fact that Jesus came down and it says he made his dwelling upon us. So Jesus came to you. Why is that important? I think the one takeaway, I, or the one thing I want you to take away about reading these first few verses of John, besides all the you know, some, some of the scholarly knowledge and insight and blow away information that I, I gave you is make a decision to get into your word every single day, whether you're a brand new Christian, you're a restored Christian, or you are someone who perhaps is a strong Christian, a strong disciple of Jesus, but you want to dig deeper into your word. Just remember that when you go into your word and you read the word, you are seeing God you are seeing God. And if you haven't let that sink in, let it sink in. Okay. Take a moment. And I will see you next time. I will see you next week as I continue to go and die, dig deep into the, the book of John. I am so excited to be able to bring this to you today and every single week. And I want to um, encourage you to, again, dig deep into your word. And I do have one question for you before you go. What was your biggest takeaway from this podcast and this video if you're watching on YouTube? What was your biggest takeaway? I want you to drop that in the comment below.